All right, another month down, another monthly Q&A video where I, I take questions from you guys and I'm able to talk about stuff that I wouldn't talk about in a normal video in a lot of instances. Now, uh, for these, I get questions from this video. So essentially, uh, just leave a comment in this video, a question for the next video. All of these questions I got in this video are from the previous video's comments section uh, and also YouTube membership folks and Patreon folks that have my back. All that stuff is linked in the description down below. Also, shout out to Audible for sponsoring this video, but let's just jump into the first question. Evan Straight Edge 316 says, I don't know whether you've addressed this before, uh, what would be your advice to someone who wants to get back to gaming but has limited budget. I feel very strongly, uh, for me, especially if I fall out of gaming, not for budgetary reasons, but just like vibe wise, I go back and play old stuff. And so if you're trying to game on a budget, a lot of times older stuff is much cheaper. Uh, and on a, a, another good thing is that if you just say you have an older PC or an older laptop, it's more likely if you get a cheap old game, you'll be able to run it. Also, don't discount mobile. I know a lot of people don't wanna hear that, but there's a lot of ports of some pretty interesting games on mobile. You just gotta like kind of dig for them, you know, trust in some of those mobile game websites or those YouTube channels that like try and curate actually good, well-made indie mobile games, not just games that are designed to get your money. There are still plenty out there, uh, but also, the services, there are so many now. Uh, I mean, like Xbox Game Pass is the big thing. A lot of people talk about that. If you have access to that, definitely go for it. Even if you're on a budget, try and get a two month trial or a three month trial. You know, They go on sale pretty often. Just make a Twitter account and follow deal sites like at Wario64. Also, if you're on PlayStation, they have the, they have the newer version of PlayStation Plus and uh, they always offer free games there. Uh, and then Steam and Epic. Epic in particular does also offer free games pretty consistently. So like at this point, there's always going to be something to play. It may not always be the latest and the greatest, but with like a little bit of savvy and looking around, you can always have something to play. And then if you are trying to play the latest and greatest stuff, I would say definitely stay glued to the deal sites because gaming is expensive now. So you gotta kind of be, you gotta kind of be streetwise to it all. John, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name, but on Patreon asks, how do you decide if you're going to review a game for before you buy? There's been a couple of popular ish games that I was surprised to see had no before you buy made for them. So I'm genuinely curious. Yeah, so with that straight up, I gotta be honest, I am very aware that like we just disappoint people sometimes. Me in particular, because I am the main before you buy person, disappoint people sometimes. And I always try and say it's because, hey, we're a very small team. Uh, we wanna try and still maintain some quality over quantity and you know I just can't touch every game. To be honest, I already have a really hard time keeping up with it all. So if I were to try and do every single game, it would just be shitty and you guys wouldn't like it and I would half-ass it and we don't want that. So I do have to pick and choose very carefully and Game Ranks itself as an entity is very aggressive with things that are interesting and will get a lot of views. That's just like the business model, the, the long and short of it, it's not great, but we do still seek out the weird ones that are going viral, but like sometimes we just miss stuff. Before you buys are mostly me and one other writer, Eric, behind the scenes, sometimes backing me up with like capture and stuff like that. So I've gotten a little bit better at uh, delegating work out, but like ultimately still before you buy is still like my favorite thing to do on game rank. So I try to do as much of it as possible, but it means that some things kind of slip by. Eventually, don't freak out, uh, but I am going Going to retire from doing before you buy videos. So then it'll probably change. More people will probably take it on. But, but for now, we're trying to prioritize it still being a good thing, good information, interesting to watch, and not just spamming them. Rodrigo on Patreon says, uh, no question about video games, but do you play any instruments or have any hidden talents that maybe you haven't talked about before? Uh, so I played alto saxophone in the, the, the school band. I also know how to play guitar. I don't play it often anymore. It's actually very sad. Uh, the people in my life are always like, hey, remember when you used to play guitar all the time and now you just don't? And yeah, I just completely fell off. Eventually, maybe I'll pick up guitar again more, but uh, I'm also weirdly competent with a yo-yo. I wouldn't say I'm like the ultimate trickster or anything, but put a yo-yo in my hand and I can spin that shit all day anyway. That's it, I'm really boring. Uh, moving on, Halo's Finest 88 says, did you play Jet Moto back in the day? I'd love a remake or a new sequel. I feel like I've talked about Jet Moto in videos before, but that game had this, like the, the main menu, all the music in that game did not have to go so hard. Hard. And then also the character selection screen and the character art and the bios, 
they did not have to go so hard. That game is so sick, like the presentation, the concept of it, it's better than Wave Race, it's better than all that shit because it's a jet ski that is also just a hover bike and it there was cool jumps and a little bit of like violence to it, but it was just so cool, so perfectly 90s. For those of you who don't know, this was like an old ass PlayStation 1 game. It was actually one of my first PlayStation 1 games and one of my first 3D games and I got a lot of love for it and I think something like that could be fun today in some way, but that type of game also falls in with stuff like, you know, F-Zero or Wipeout, you know, like there are some spiritual successors in the indie scene, but like those games aren't as big as they used to be. Oh, friend of the show, Jimmy Champagne asks, what do you think of the leaked DualSense Pro? So uh, yeah, if, if that leak, that rumor is to be believed, Sony might be soon revealing uh, their version of like a high-end controller, like the Xbox Elite controller. So I've been using the Elite version two for a while now. I use the first Elite. I understand these types of controllers are kind Kind of expensive and a bit of a luxury, but I play enough where I, I really like having them. And whenever I play a game on PC that like I would rather just use a controller for, I plug the V2 in and it's great. And if there was a DualSense Pro instead, I would plug that into the PC and use that all the time. And obviously for PS5 as well. I love the DualSense features so much. So to have it kind of like with maybe what I would like to see, like a, a premium texture, just like that nice kind of expensive feel to it, but also weight. You know, I understand weightless controllers are sometimes good, but I like the heft of the Elite, so I would like that here. Uh, and with that heft, I would assume would hopefully come way better battery life because the battery life is probably my biggest issue with the DualSense controller. Uh, and also with the rumor of it having swappable joysticks possibly, like you'll be able to pop them out and put in different ones or just replacement ones. I'd also like to see different touchpad textures or like little face plates for the touchpad. I know it's like a small thing, but the DualSense is like a totally flat touchpad where I miss the slightly textured version of the original PS4 controller. That's like a super nitpick type of thing, but like I'm easy, just make it a nice nice premium quality controller with good connection and no issues like drift and stuff and better battery life and I'm a happy boy. John Stoll on YouTube memberships asks, be honest, how do you feel about Starfield? <sighs> how much time do you have? So Starfield, I, you guys know me, I kind of have like a fence sitting. I'm like, ah, I don't know, eh, it's all right. It's not doing it for me, but I also just am never type the type of person to be like, this looks horrible. This looks like the worst game ever. I'm just not really about that, but I, I, it's like 50-50 exciting for me. I saw the combat, thought the combat did not look good at all. I actually think it looked <laughs> like worse than Fallout 4. But again, only a small glimpse, but still wasn't really impressed by that. Wasn't really impressed by the frame rate. Not really too excited about scanning animals and, and planets and rocks and mining rocks. I did play a lot of No Man's Sky, so I'm, I'm kind of like, I have a game for that. Thanks. And they keep kind of giving me reasons to go back in and jump back in here and there where Starfield, I think it's a, it just, it's interesting. I, on the one hand, I like that it actually just felt like it was like, oh, this is just another Bethesda game. It is Skyrim in space. From the way the character is walking in the beginning, it felt very much like an intro, like Bethesda has done for a lot of their other games, uh, to just the way the HUD, the way, the way everything kind of works just felt very them, but I'm just, I'm so curious to see like how it all flows together. Because like, if you still tell me like, as much as some of it I didn't think looked too thrilling on paper, a lot of it still interests me. I love that they're going back in on like faction stuff and having all these different cities and these different groups and hopefully faction-based story decisions to really align with stuff. I also like, not gonna lie, I was actually pretty hooked on the base building stuff in Fallout 4. Like that was like my addiction for a minute. So for them to embrace that, but also do ship building with that same type of thing, hopefully with the same types of resource gathering and crafting, that part I can really get into. I was, I was like, oh shit, even if like some parts of this game I, re I really don't like, if I could build my own ship and stock it with my own crew, that's pretty cool. I, en I enjoy that. If they can have a little bit of an element of like talking to your crew on a ship and they're all special characters, like a Mass Effect or a KOTOR, that is very cool. And if I can make my ship look dope, I find that interesting. I think I just gotta get over the fact that like it isn't like necessarily the next big thing. It is just, another Bethesda game. And they very much from Fallout to Elder Scrolls, they have their way that they make those games and people love them and then other people bitch about them and hate them. And then other people are kind of in the middle and they mob them and they make them crazy. So 
I think that's all interesting. I'm going to play it day one just because I still am excited to see their take on a space game, but it seems like it's going to be familiar. I just really hope in the time from now to release, the combat gets cleaned up, you know, hopefully this is a, a well-performing game. They're still sticking with a lot of their same tool sets. So that is not me giving like a safe answer or anything, but it's just kind of me being like, ah, oh, I don't know what to think. It's just very much the divisive game of the week. I'm gonna have to wait until I get it in my hands to really judge it. Cause there's some shit that I do not like. And then there's some other stuff that seems pretty cool. So yeah. And now, before we get to the next question, I just wanted to thank the sponsor of today's video, Audible. So if you don't know Audible by now, just know that it's the best place to listen to whatever you're interested in. A massive selection of audiobooks across like every genre, new and old stuff, plus Audible originals. If you're looking for something fresh and exclusive from top experts and stars. So the way it works is that if you're an Audible member, you can pick one title a month to keep. All Audible members now also get a growing list of titles and stuff included with the membership and new things are added every month. Uh, lately, I've been stuck waiting around the office, just waiting for long files to upload. We do big files. The internet here is bad, so I need something to do. Instead of just mindlessly scrolling, I decided to do something a little bit more productive. I've been listening to some good stuff, and I'm happy to announce that like they are here for the gamers. I've been going through Halo, the fall of Reach again to remind myself of good Halo storytelling, but they also have stuff from Mass Effect, Bioshock and other nerdy stuff that I'm interested in. So I've been happy and I believe it's worth the membership. So here's the deal. New members can try Audible free for 30 days. So get busy. All you gotta do is visit audible.com slash on Jake or text on Jake to 500 500. Link in the description down below. Hope you have some fun. And thanks to Audible again for sponsoring this video. Yaman yeah, says, uh, speaking of Kojima, the Metal Gear Solid PS1 trailer way back when blew my mind, my tiny mind. So as a veteran gamer from the pre-internet era, do you feel that social media is oversaturating us and killing hype? P.S. I miss demo discs. Uh, so for me, the Metal Gear Solid PS1 trailer was something that was like insane. Uh, also the Tokyo Game Show trailer, waiting for that thing to download uh, on this like shitty computer that wasn't even mine, and then trying to watch that endlessly was just incredible. Just such a well-made trailer. I do think that social media is oversaturating us and killing our hype, but I wouldn't say, believe it or not, not to like side with the companies in this one instance, but I do really think it's, for me personally, it, it's not like the advertising or the showing off of the games or the presentation of the games that's killing the hype. It's like the, the arguing and the discourse around the games before they're even out, because I'm still very much at the point where I'm like, I don't care, I just wanna play it, I wanna see what's up, I wanna feel how I wanna feel about it. And uh, the noise can get just so loud that even as I try try to like not be 100% on social media you know, media all the time, it still gets so drowned out. Like it really could put a damper on things. Like like with The Last of Us Part Two. I was going into that game thinking, is this the worst game ever made in the history of existence or is this pretty cool? I don't even know what the fuck is going on anymore. So personally for me, that's what's killing my hype. Every time I see a game and I'm like, this is gonna be the argument of the week. So, it, you know, it's again, me trying to get over hearing what other people have to think and say all day. That's a whole nother conversation on social media. But I will say, I loved magazines for getting excited about video games. There was something so tangible, so tactile about that. Just the feel of going through those pages and staring at those little screenshots endlessly. And that was all you could see. And you could imagine so much out of those little couple of screenshots and then getting that exciting cover story and seeing these blowout new screenshots and details about this game you're excited for. That was unmatched. That was a feeling like no other. And I, I do miss that, not gonna lie. Now, uh, Tony on YouTube membership asks, with the success of Top Gun Maverick, are there any other older movies you think are great and deserve a sequel? Personally, if it was done right, I'd love a sequel and or prequel to Goodfellas. RIP Ray Liotta. Yes, dude, that's my Irish Italian boy right there, fellow brethren. <laughs> but I can see how some things you don't touch. Yeah, I'm getting to the point now where I think a lot of those older things, like they're too far gone. And like, you don't always want like some old people showing up, coming back and it's like, eh. but speed, hear me out on this one. Speed is one of my favorite action movies, top tier, excellent film, cover to cover, back to back. I think they could pull off a speed three. Speed two doesn't count, but a speed three, I think, I don't think they made a speed three unless it was like a straight to DVD thing, but a sequel to speed one. Call it Speed 3, call it SP3D, Spreed. 
Just because, specifically, I just watched uh, The Lost City with Sandra Bullock and Chatting Tatum, and like, Sandra Bullock still got it. She could keep up. And then on the other hand, Keanu Reeves, Keanu Reeves has proven time and time again, he still got it. And I think we need something like a lighthearted, fun action movie type of thing like that. Speed is incredible. It, it's, I'm asking for like disaster. I'm asking for that to blow up in my face, but let's do that. Fuck it. Godzilla Dreamer says, hey, I was wondering, what was the thing that got you interested in the DeLorean? And Teriyaki Chicken says, did you start liking the DeLorean because you saw it in Back to the Future or did you kind of discover it on your own? How did you find your love for it? So for me, what it really was, was like, I'll be honest. Yeah, I saw it in Back to the Future and I was like, that car looks so sick. And then it was really hearing like, adults or like my parents or just other people talking about the car like oh yeah the DeLorean I remember that thing that shit bucket and I remember being like what what's how what so it was really looking into the story the, the amount of stories and the amount of like the continent spanning scams and, and, and interesting things and hardworking people all coming together. There's such a fascinating story behind this car that I, I've really grown to love and embrace. Coupled with the fact that like, I just thought the car looked really cool. I like 80s things and I love the style and it, there's still nothing like that. And I always like, people get mad at me when I say it, but like, I don't, I'm not really into the whole time machine thing. I'm really into the car. I love the car for what it is. Flaws and all, which of course, the people in comment sections always love to remind me how bad the car is. We get it. Ooh, Hunter asks, uh, with Stranger Things coming back after a few years, can you talk about any interest you have in the show overall, whether you watch it and are excited for season four? Yes, so now after this question, I'm really excited for uh, season four, part two. I, like Stranger Things, I kind of like watch it. The first season I thought was incredible. Second season lost me. Third season I thought was pretty good, but I thought it was like a good place to end it. And like, I just kind of like lose interest after it goes away. And then this time in particular, when it was coming back, I was like, okay, I'll watch more Stranger Things. Yeah, that's the thing I watch. But season four, I thought was really fucking incredible. Great villain, just really embracing a lot of fun Freddy Krueger style stuff from the original Nightmare on Elm Street to like some little bit of Dream Warrior stuff uh, to just making the characters even more interesting to also getting into like some societal, cultural, small town things and a lot of themes. Uh, and then of course, just the fun 80s stuff. I thought this season was pretty great and I'm looking forward to seeing how it wraps up. I love Vecna. I thought the villain, the whole mystery there was absolutely incredible and the payoff was really good. So like Stranger Things is like, just when I thought I was, I was out, they pull me back in with a really good season. And I can't believe they still have one more season after this. There's still going to be a season five from what I know even though this feels like the end. It all just makes sense to wrap up here. So I'm like, how can they keep this going? I just hope it wraps up in a good way. Willie one on Patreon asks, uh, I was wondering what your opinion was on Joker 2 with Joaquin Phoenix reprising the role. Personally, I love Joker 2019, but I don't think it needed a sequel. However, Lady Gaga as Harley Quinn could be really cool. Yeah, I agree with that. Lady Gaga as Harley Quinn could be pretty cool. I really, really liked uh, A Star Is Born. Ha Ooh, that was actually pretty good. I liked Joker as like a fun character, one-off weird thing. I thought, I as much as like, I know sometimes it's hard to tell like a Joker Gotham story without some involvement of the Wayne family or Bruce Wayne, I actually thought some of that stuff, like I, that felt a little shoehorned. Like I'm like, we don't need that. This could have been just Joker insular. So like, I ultimately thought that I didn't, I've never really gone on record with that movie, but I, I thought it was a pretty fun and different thing. So. I was actually hoping that it wouldn't get a sequel. I love a one-off good thing like this. Do it again, but with a different famous villain, DC or Marvel. But, you know, we are getting a new Joker, and if it's like the rumors are suggesting, things are just going full weird and even more, like, not artsy, but, like, wannabe. I, I don't know, but, like, if it's going musical, if Lady Gaga's coming in, whatever, dude, I don't care. I feel like even if it goes crazy, it's, like, on the one hand, does it kind of undo some of the stuff the first movie was trying to say or the tone or the vibe? Maybe, but it's also pulling a Joker move by being like, fuck it, whatever, embrace the chaos. I don't know. Jimmy the Gamer says, hey Jake, when I was a kid, my family used to be pretty poor, so I couldn't afford to buy most of the big name games from that time. As a result, I ended up playing a lot of obscure indie titles during my youth like Scourge, Hive, and Spectrobes. So I was wondering, did you ever end up playing any low-priced, unpopular titles when you were young? And if so, what were they? Did you like any of them? So that's a really good point because I, I also didn't like grow up like super fortunate. So for me, I don't really remember getting too many like weird off-brand games, but I do remember 
getting one game and that was the one game you'd have for a long time. And for me, I remember getting like Stockholm syndrome, like almost like knowing that a game I got was like a bad pick. It wasn't great, but I learned to like it because damn it, it was like the only thing I had. So I feel like I had to force myself <laughs> to like a lot of games. Uh, there were a lot of shitty Game Boy games, like a lot of shitty licensed Game Boy games that I went through. I had I had Jeff Gordon NASCAR racing on Game Boy, and I don't like NASCAR or any of that, but I played the hell out of that game. It was all I had. A lot of early PlayStation 1 games, even too, like if you rent something and it's not great, it's like you're stuck with it, deal with it, hope you like it for a little while. It was definitely an interesting time because like to your point, Jimmy, like it does kind of push you to try different things. Like the, that's what you had to check out. You didn't have a choice. And that was me, just getting stuck with a game I knew was crappy, but learning to love it and embrace it. But I think that's a good end point to wrap up this Q&A. So thank you guys for coming around and listening to me ramble about this stuff. I have so much fun talking about these. So like I say, Drop a question in the comments, you know? If there's something you want me to touch on, especially if it's like a new relevant gaming or, or movie news thing that I wouldn't really do a dedicated video on, definitely hit me up. I, I'm down to yap about this stuff. So drop a question. And then of course, if you wanna yell about, like yell at me about my certain opinions, Hit me up on Twitter and Instagram. You know the deal. Also, my new podcast. Uh, it's on Skillup's YouTube channel, uh, but it's also available on all major podcast platforms. It's called Friends Per Second. That will be linked in the description down below. But thank you guys. So let's talk soon. I'll see you in the next one. I'm Jake Baldino. Subscribe because video games, pizza's on me.